In this video, we'll be looking at how to deal with partial fractions where the numerator has a degree greater than or equal to that of the denominator. Now, since the degree of the numerator isn't less than the degree of the denominator, we would need to do a polynomial long division. However, we don't actually have to do this explicitly. If we're clever enough, the polynomial long division can actually be done implicitly in our partial fraction decomposition. And that's what we're going to do in this example here. So if we want to do our decomposition on our integrand, 2x plus 1, 2x squared plus 1, sorry, over x minus 1, x plus 2, we want to do a partial fraction decomposition on that. Now we already know that we're going to end up with two fractions with the denominators x minus 1 and x plus 2. But we actually have something else that we need to add on to that, and that's going to be a polynomial. Now, what is the degree of this polynomial? The degree of the polynomial which is going to sit out the front is going to be the degree of the numerator minus the degree of the denominator in our original fraction. So in our original integrand, the numerator has a degree 2, and so does the denominator. So 2 minus 2 gives us 0. And a degree 0 polynomial is just a constant. And that's why out here we have a, just a constant. And we already know that this needs to be b and this needs to be c. And if you're wondering, this polynomial that sits out the front here, which in this case is just a constant a, this plays the role of the quotient when we do our polynomial long division. Okay, so this is now just embedded in our process or in our decomposition. Okay, all right, moving on. Now we have to work out the values of a, b, and c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to equate the numerators of the left and right hand side. Now the numerator on the left hand side is 2x squared plus 1. On the right hand side, if we were to make a fraction, the numerator would be a into x minus 1 times x plus 2 plus b into x plus 2 plus c into x minus 1. And I'm going to make a substitution, a few substitutions, and I'm going to choose those substitutions carefully to make some of these factors here equal to 0. Okay, so the first one would be to let x equal 1. If I let x equals 1, the left hand side is going to be 2 plus 1, which is 3. On the right hand side, the first term involving a is going to become 0. The last term involving c will become 0. And I'm left with b times 3, which means that b is equal to 1. I can do a similar thing and let x equal negative 2. That's going to give me, let's see, 8 plus 1, which is 9 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the term involving a becomes 0. The term involving b becomes 0. And we're left with c times negative 3, which means that c is equal to negative 3. And how am I going to work out the value of a? Well, I'm going to equate coefficients of x squared. So the coefficient of x squared. On the left hand side, that's easy enough. That's just equal to 2. On the right hand side, where does that come from? Well, it comes from a times x times x. That gives me ax squared. So the coefficient is a. And there's no other place where I can get an x squared from. So our value for a is just 2. So what we have now is our integral is equal to 2 plus, what's the value of b? 1 over x minus 1. And then we have our value of c, which is negative 3, divided by x plus 2. All of this is being integrated with respect to x. Let's slide this up a little bit. Okay, integrating this now is pretty easy. This will be 2x plus log of x minus 1 minus 3 times log of x plus 2 plus a constant. And that is our final answer.